Hello everybody, welcome back for another anime film review. I am your host Adon Tron, and today we are reviewing the movie Sin. The movie. <laughs> this is a film that was inspired by a video game that came out with the same title, Sin. Uh, it is a short film. It is approximately 57 minutes long. It did come out roughly 21 years ago in uh, the year 2000. Uh, fun fact about this film, it was originally done in English dialogue. So it's originally dubbed in English and then later on filmed in other languages. Um, it's by the company ADV Films. So for a quick synopsis of this film, Blade, a semi-cyborg cop must unravel a series of mysterious kidnappings as he delves into the city's merciless underworld. An elaborate mystery unfolds. That is the bare synopsis I can find on here. So as always, if you don't need spoilers, you can skip the recap by checking below. You can also click the little description area and you'll see the timestamp there and you can skip right there too as well. Either way, if you want to stay for the recap, I'll be here with you going through everything that happened. Otherwise, let's get this bad boy started. So we start off our film essentially with a chase scene. You see these space age vehicles kind of like they look like motorcycles at first, but they're just oversized and the cockpit uh, houses all the officers that are inside, some of which are going to be our main characters. And they're in hot pursuit of this mongoloid looking creature that kidnapped the girl. We find out her name's Alice or Elise, Elise. And as they're in pursuit, we realize this creature has some abilities like it can shoot energy or whatnot from its fingertips. And it tries to escape in the sewer system. Our main character, Blade, he pursues, followed by JC and another officer. JC is like their tech guy. He's like really intelligent, they're a hacker, and basically he thinks he's found the girl and that the creature got away because the little girl's like in this little tunnel area that's too small. And as soon as he gets close to the little girl without informing the rest of the team, the slime that's around her surrounds him and merges with him. Kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing. And as it's taking him over, he's crying out to Blade to rescue the girl. He tosses her over to Blade and he's asking like to be taken out. Blade does this almost without hesitation. There is slight bit of hesitation but he pretty much goes through and does this. And then we're at the funeral. Well technically we've been juggling back and forth between JC's funeral and that flashback scene but basically that's it. Blade stays behind after everybody has left and an elderly gentleman who looks pretty well off shows up, talks about Blade's father, how he knew him in the past, how he uh, feels still indebted to Blade for how his father has taken care of him. It's a code of a mafia man. He still has to pay off that debt. While they're having this conversation, you see a female character that's watching over them. She looks kind of pissed, but she's been spying. Then we cut to a scene with looks like a business meeting being held remotely. Think of a Zoom, kind of like that, as being held, uh, you know, through a, a web session. But the head honcho, the main person in charge, is a woman who decides to be submerged underwater while she's holding the meetings. Like she's wearing scuba gear, just floating there. And one guy is giving her uh, data reports that she's not favoring. She fires him right on the spot before he has a chance to, like, rationalize. And then she comes out uh, there's no real rational reason why she was in the water it's not like she was chilling or anything like that she was literally some more submerged but not like swimming swimming just floating there in the water and the person that greets her when she comes out the water is a mafia boss a young guy he looks like he's up a cover and they're talking about their future plans that things are going their way soon they'll accomplish their goals and he always says, like, it's like, you've always been a good friend to me. As he licks his ring, which is this shape of a two breasts on top of a pair of legs. Instantly, this guy is on my creep radar. Go back to our main character, Blade, who's back at the police precinct. He's like the head of the department, by the way. Turns out that lady who's been spying on him is a military liaison. She's been sent to take over the investigation and she's also the sister of the character that died at the beginning on top of which she also has the same initials 
as her brother, JC. So everybody just keeps calling her JC. It's not weird at all. She calls Blade out for his father's dealings with the mafia that supposedly he was tied with them. He was a cro- crooked cop. He, she obviously blames Blade for her brother's death recently. She calls him out on it and says that it's going to go to court, but I don't need uh, to wait th- to then to make my accusation. And Blade flats out refuses her interrogation of the little girl because the little girl's still in shock. So JC threatens to take it above his head and leaves for now. Then we cut to a scene where... The mafia boss and the previous uh, corporate woman I mentioned, her name is Alexis Sinclair. Turns out they're in bed together. And as they're getting things together, she gets a news report or not a news report. She gets a notification and he goes, right when we're getting started, she goes, don't worry, you'll enjoy this. And she starts showing him scenes of battle footage where it's across the world and it's the same creatures that have... That was what attacked JC. A little bit, slightly different, more modified. But they're attacking military outposts, different countries. She's explaining, we've solved it. You know, we've almost perfected it, but we've essentially solved it. And and the applications are endless. Creatures that can transform and take shape. They're like the perfect uh, weapon and uh, the next evolutionary step for mankind. And he's just like, think of the profit margin. Think of where we can, what money we can make together. She's like, yes, together. And she pours him a drink. And he's like, to our future together, of course. And he takes a drink and then he starts like foaming at the mouth and he passes out. He's like, what What did you do to me? And she's like, don't worry, don't worry. I, I'm going to take care of you. And he wakes up on a surgery table and she goes, you always said you wanted to be stronger. And she goes, by the way, I don't use any anesthetic. I, there is always pain with creation. And then she slices open his stomach. From that point, we had a scene where Blade was talking with the little girl. They're chatting. And he's forming a little bit of a bond between the two of them. And they're talking about how they're both survivors and how his whole, uh, like his body has been replaced with cybernetic part and so forth. So they're making a connection. But nothing really that drives the story along. It's just this is the point. They're just establishing for those two characters. And then uh, the only thing about it is that JC gets to witness this from the background. So she can kind of see that he's a little bit more human and there may be that she may be mis- misunderstanding Blade. Then we cut to another chase scene where other cops are trying to chase down a potential monster. And instead they find a little girl. The little girl looks like the one that was just rescued by Blade. But instead, she has a little teddy bear with her. And as they're trying to, like, you know, calm her down, then the teddy bear transforms into, like, this open mouth creature that is fused to her arm. And she tears the first officer in half. Then she, like, starts changing gradually and just starts tearing them all apart. And Blade gets called in to the scene. And as he pulls up, she sees, he sees that she's no longer the little girl, but he recognizes her as the same girl from the hospital but she's like berserk mode and he's spending his time trying to stop this creature and kill her while this is happening uh, at the hospital the same mafioso who was being operated on shows up at the police station now he clearly doesn't look human he's humanoid but he's wearing his suit and it's torn up and he's kind of armored up and the first officer that goes to talk to him is like hey you can't go there he's like don't touch me and he like shoves his hand through the guy's chest and rips out his heart and he continues on to try to get the girl that was originally kidnapped at the beginning of the film now he gets stopped by jc but the bullets are just bouncing off of him they're not doing the trick until another officer tim shows up like with this grenade launcher and which seems to do the trick for all of five seconds because the guy shows up as a puddle of goo again and does the same trick He fuses with Tim, just like the original JC at the beginning. But instead of her, the female JC, trying to kill Tim to put him out of his misery, she can't do it. So he knocks her out. And before Tim could do anything, the mafioso takes Tim's hand and forces himself to cut himself open and kill himself. And then off screen, he kidnaps the girl. Blade successfully destroys the monster, gets back to the hospital sees the girl has been kidnapped. His fellow colleague, Tim, has also been killed, but his body is all shriveled and changed because of the mutation that was taken over him. And JC now has a new view of Blade. They tried to take this to their higher ups, 
because they suspect it is all part of weaponized technology from the Syntex Corporation. And their higher up officials tell them, no, stop what you're doing. Give up this case. We're going to uh, look into it. You guys are going to have to sit this one out. They decide not to. They uh, approach one of their doctors and they figure out that it's all a kind of mutagen. And they trace it back to, for sure, the head scientist of the Syntech Corporation. is a father and daughter set of scientists that basically are the founders. This knowledge combined with what... JC knows, the female live JC that is, all solidifies this information. And since they have to parking lot their investigation, Blade decides to leave to pursue more outside the box options. And we go back to the household of the mafia boss who we saw at the beginning of the movie with uh, Blade. And that mafia boss is recollecting the past of his father and he tells him, I still owe you. I worked with your father and I tried helping him. I gave him information about the other mafia families because I knew what they were doing. They were tied with that sin corporation and I knew it was a sin against God for what they were planning on doing. The experiments that they were doing on the people and everything like that. That's why I helped your father. And in turn that cost him his life and cost you your body. So in repayment, I am going to help you one more time. Uh, Take my advice. Stay out of it. But just in case you're going to pursue this, here is some chemicals that we acquired, let's say. And they're basically... A fast acting cancer fashioned into like a bullet format that he can insert into his gun. Blade takes them and his female officer Katie shows up piloting uh, their helicopter and JC's there with them and he's like we are gonna go get her back. So they fly off to the headquarters of Sin which is like this sci-fi demon lord looking tower off the shoreline. At this point Miss Sinclair is getting ready to operate on Elise and she has Elise strapped to a table she gives a quick little villain monologue as I would like to say it explaining that Elise is actually the long lost piece to her father's equation she was basically the end result of his experiments and a byproduct of it the camera pans out and you see other versions of Elise in tubes and she screams before she's being operated on because you see all the equipment and whatnot getting ready to cut into her. Cut back to the helicopter. They get back to they get to the tower. They shoot some lines in. They glide in. And it's Blade and JC. Katie stays in the helicopter. She pulls out. And JC joins Blade. And he's like, why are you here? She goes, I know the layouts. This is going to be very complicated. If I'm here with you, you have a 5% chance of success higher than if I'm not here with you. He's like, just don't hold me back. And they start going up the tower. And as they're going through the tower and the different floors, they're killing the monsters. He's shooting them with the bullets, the special rounds. And they do the trick. They're, they're killing the monsters. They almost get to the top. And as they reach the t- uh two floors before the top they start hearing like this italian music playing and he's like this is one guy i can't avoid you can go ahead of me but i cannot pass this guy this is the mafioso we were talking about that was changed uh, vincenzo and vincenzo is basically just sitting there listening in on his music in like a, a essentially like an oversized audio room with just speakers everywhere And he's trying to taunt Blade by saying, I've been waiting here for a while for you. What took you so long? And Blade's like, "Uh, I was ordering an Italian style funeral for you. He goes, oh, you're a very funny man. Your father would have lived longer if he had a better sense of humor like you do. And so there was a little bit of quip back and forth like that. And then they start trying to kill each other. Blade isn't successful at first because the first few rounds he shoots, they just bounce off Vincenzo's skin because he hardens it and he does this thing where he cuts off his hand to make more tentacles which threw me off because i'm like you can shapeshift bro why do you need to do that but fine okay and he's he's wrecking blade he's just tossing him all over the room cutting him open doing all sorts of stuff jc shows up to provide a distraction blade grabs a loose wire that was knocked out from when he was like knocked through a wall and electrocutes vincenzo they think that's it it's not He comes back bigger and tougher than before, and he starts to choke out Blade. And as Blade is gasping for air, he goes, do you know what my last name is? And Shinzo says, are you losing your mind? Of course I do. He goes, they call me Blade. And then his arm opens up and a a knife comes out. And in his hand, he had the bullet 
special bullet round. He does this move where he shoves the round into Vincenzo's eye and then stabs the blade right into it. And that explodes the round, killing Vincenzo. Now our two would-be heroes make it to the final stage to get to the operating room. Alexis is no longer there, but Elise is. As they're about to get her off the operating table, a giant tube drops from the ceiling, engaging them both, or all three of them, to be precise. Alexis shows up, telling them they're going to die. They're, he, she's releasing a gas, and Blade ga- gives JC like a canister so she can breathe some oxygen. He's like, I'll survive. And Alexis tells them, even though you have cybernetic parts, you're still going to die. But apparently his cybernetic parts has been monitoring his health li- life and informing Kate who's been piloting the helicopter the entire time. So she shoots two new harpoons through the wall, hits the canister that they're in, and rips out the wall. At which moment, Alexis loses her cool. She gets infuriated, and she's like, I'm not letting you guys go. We're not done. And she unleashes one final monster, like this giant lizard-like monster that has the head of her deceased father like fused with it and she tells her father consume the missing dna you need consume elise your crowning achievement and become your perfect self something along those lines and this creature devours all the other elise that were in the test tubes starts going after our main elise it's knocking everyone out of the way blade gets up with his other hand not the one with the blade, but the one that does look like a, a robotic hand. Grabs one more bullet, charges head first, and shoves his hand through Dr. Sinclair's head. The father, that is. And then crushes it to kill the monster. Before the monster could die, though, it does like start expanding like these stone tentacles and whatnot. And it's going berserk, which knocks out Alexis from the top of the building. So she falls to her death, but it's going berserk. So JC hijacks like a military satellite, like quickly on her wrist, and uses that satellite to essentially cut through the monster and cut through the building. And then in the ensuing chaos they escape because blade is running down this like this pillar that's collapsing um think of it okay so if you've seen the rise of skywalker and you remember that scene at the end where they're running down the ship that's collapsing on the on the surface of the ship and they're falling down and just the people are running across just trying to stay on or jump off it's kind of one of those moments And he's running and he has JC and Elise. Then he jumps and then Kate flies in and catches them. And that's that's it, really. Like Elise holds on to his arm that he exploded, but then it just goes right into credits. And that's it. So what can I say about this movie? I can easily tell there is a lot of issues with the animation. Uh, first of all, it, it, it juggles between, you know, drawing to CGI to looks like there was cell work that they just zoomed in on. And there was parts that were looked like it was either rushed or just improperly done. Like there was parts where like you have cell uh, like scenes were looked like they were overlays and they zoomed in super hard on those overlays to accomplish the goal of making it look like they're looking at their computer watches. But then instead of it just being like, boom, it's there, it's very shaky. It's like, like I'm doing this right now just by kicking my table, but it feels like that on the screen. But instead of everything being in frame, you see there's a separate part of the frame that's off. So there's a gap in the in the actual picture of the frame where it's supposed to be connecting to the side of the actual screen. It's not intentional. It's definitely clearly not there. And then there's other parts in the scene where they'll do like zoom in and then it's super pixelated and it shouldn't be pixelated at all. You can clearly tell. And then other parts are just like the overlays are just not mixing with the anime style or it's like the emotion is off with the motion of the rest of the picture it just just doesn't work audio wise let's start with dialogue i watched this in japanese now the movie was originally filmed to be dubbed in english you can tell that by the words uh in the subs and you can also tell that by the lip sync the japanese dubbing isn't that bad it doesn't feel too out of place you can tell the difference of course it's just weird that it's in the reverse order i had more issue with the sound score 
just doesn't work. I know this is inspired and based on a game, but a lot of times it feels like they're trying to use the same sound score that you would be in the game, and it's just not the same tone. Especially like the opening credit scene. It's super long, and it's definitely like the, the audio soundtrack from like the main credit scene or like the menu scene on a game. But it doesn't work for a short film or a film in general. Now, I'll be honest, like, I don't know if the English dub has a different sound score, because sometimes that does happen, but I couldn't find the English dub. I looked on YouTube. VRV and Crunchyroll is uh, where I found this, and oddly enough, they have the subtitle version, which boggled my mind because I know this was originally a English film, so I thought they would have the English version, but they didn't. And I didn't want to go looking for the DVD, I'll be honest. Probably should. Now, story-wise, I didn't like the story. I mean, the concept isn't that bad. The story does try to elude that we have a conspiracy. This is what's going on. And it's not really too complex. But it, at the same time, it's not something that really hooked me, made me feel like I want to know more. And it's hard to, for me to describe. It, it just didn't drive me when I watched the story and let it play out and I listened to it. I felt like I was letting myself get distracted at times by other things just like... I'm sitting in my room with nothing to do and I've had several energy drinks throughout the day and I'm getting exhausted trying to sit here and watch this film. Now, I tried to go in with a clean slate. I have seen this film once before. I honestly forgot this film. I went in and I honestly went in with a clean slate because I have no idea what I was going back into. I did not remember what this film was about. And now I remember why. I wiped this from my mind. I am not a fan of this film. I don't believe this is a film to get anybody into anime. I personally don't believe this is a film for people that are in anime. At that time, when it came out, Sin was probably a very popular game. I never played it myself, but I don't think it holds up. I don't think it it will stand the test of time. And I think as time will go on, it'll be even worse for a lot of people. I am honestly going to give this a one. Now, I haven't given a one in a long time. I almost feel guilty for doing that. At the same time, I don't. This is not a good film in my opinion. I like a lot of other projects from ADV films. This one, I can't stand behind at all. Now, if you have a different opinion, tell me. Rationalize it for me in the comments section below. I will be more than happy to listen or read. Or if you have a other suggestion to cleanse my mind of this experience, please put that down below too. I want to wash this from my memories. On that note, if you do like the video that I just did, uh, then by all means, hit that thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe for me. I will definitely continue this on. I am here every Thursday. And always, always continue to watch anime, expand your mind, and just be excellent. Laters. Let's go.